Welcome into the latest edition of the BRS and Insider. There's snow blowing on the ground, the temperature's in the 20s, and the wind chill's in the teens. It must be baseball season. Yeah, it's perfect. Welcome it's perfect in the head coach yeah. uh, of the Raven baseball team, Eric Peterson. And coach, you were able to head down south a little bit this weekend, uh, Conway, Arkansas. Didn't quite turn out win-loss record-wise the way that you wanted to, but what? Uh, just looking back at the weekend, uh, what are some positives that you could take it out moving forward? Uh, well, you know, Michael Slayton did his thing, um, and, and Daryl Myers was really good. We had some nice freshmen do some things uh, on the mound that, that hadn't been there before. Um, Van Beesler caught really well. Basically missed all of last year with feet injuries, and um, we, we just had some nice parts. We just didn't put them all together, which is encouraging. You could just be bad on all phases, right? <laughs> um, and, and so, like, we need to get better, obviously, and, and let's not take anything away from CBC. They they really did three complete phases in defense and offense and pitching. And, um, we showed flashes of it, just not enough of them. Well, now we talk about the season in general. It is hard to gauge this time of year what your team's going to be like. How many times were you guys outside before you went down there? Well, it, it, and we're fortunate enough to have Olsen Stadium and, and Laughlin Field and, and the turf where we could get on the turf. But the, the unfortunate part is our outfield. We couldn't get on the skating rink out there. And <laughs> it, it's tough to get your footing and, and get some routes ran. And, and it, it showed this past weekend. We weren't taking great angles, but um, that's no excuse. You know, we, we got to come prepared and ready to play. And, um, compete a little bit better than what we did, um, but I think we'll get there. We, we have a veteran group. We have guys that have been there before. Um, we just need to get back out on the field. Well, that segues perfectly. Year two for you and your staff. You do have a solid core mm -hmm. coming back for this season. Just talk about what it means to have that going into year two. Oh, well, it's great because you can lean on them. You know, and when in, we're in the tough times, like, you, you know, you got guys that are going to come through that have been there before. And um, we've certainly lost three games in a row before. Uh, we've done that. We know what that feels like. Uh, and the majority of the guys know what that feels like and they know how to respond back from that. So um, I'm just glad it happened now. You know, I was talking to Nate over at Central uh, Methodist and they had a rough weekend. I think the whole heart had a rough weekend. So um, we're, we're paddling the same boat. We're all trying to figure out the same thing and who our teams are, who we're going to rely on coming out of the bullpen. And, uh, you know, our, our, our offense, we feel like it's going to be there. Um, we got the pieces to have a really good one. Uh, and we like our starting pitching. So, uh, like I said, we just need to get back out on the field. If we get some temperatures to kind of increase this weekend, you'll have an opportunity to play for the first time at home. How How's the approach from a, a coaching standpoint, trying to get your guys ready, but then also in the back of your head knowing that the reality is it just, A, it may be too cold, sure. we get freak snow this time of year. Yeah. How do you kind of keep them going in the right direction? Uh, you just don't tell them any different. <laughs> <laughs> you just, hey, we're playing Saturday. Um, and, and until we say that we're not, like we're just going to keep planning on uh, preparing and developing and getting guys ready to play on Saturday. And, and if uh, the baseball guts don't want us to play here, we're not going to play here. So uh, we don't worry about it. Uh, we plan on playing and uh, until we told that we can't. When baseball is such a long season, even at our level, not maybe nearly as long as it is sure. Major League Baseball, yeah. obviously, Division One is a shorter season than ours. You know, how do you keep them from maybe getting too low or too high as you progress through the season, knowing that you're going to see a wide variety yeah. of, of, of opponents who have are either in the sure. same boat that you guys are as far as not getting outside very much, being inside, yeah. or... You know, when you guys go down and you know, get some scenes from South that actually have, have the opportunity have, to have, play. Have played a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, I, I think that always goes from a coaching staff, right? And, and it's funny that you asked that question because I was talking to Coach Hay about it yesterday. And um, we just have to do a good job of not showing the negative emotion. Um, it's really easy to show that positive, <laughs> like, hey, Slayton hit another home run. <laughs> Yay, you know. Um, but when we're not successful, how do we just maintain and how do we not get too high and too low? Um, I told Coach Hayes, like the negative vibes, they spread a lot quicker. Um, so we have to do a good job as a coaching staff to, to really tame those down. Um, but like I said, we can lean on some older guys, the guys that have seen a three-game slide but also seen win 15 in a row. Um, so, so we're just going to lean on those guys. We're going to prepare. We're going to keep developing and keep going this season. It's a long season. Um, our ultimate goal is, is to be in a conference tournament. Uh, go play in Springfield and go win the dang thing. <laughs> All right, well, weather permitting, Coach Peterson and his squad will be back out here on Laughlin Field 10 o'clock on Saturday, 3 o'clock on Saturday, and on the doubleheader 
on Sunday as well. Good luck. Hopefully we get to be out there this weekend. Thanks, Josh. Go Ravens. A wise man once said, the world offers you comfort, but you were not made for comfort. You were made for greatness. Discover what you were made for. Benedictine College, where greatness begins. Welcome back to the latest edition of the BRS and Insider. Now joined by the track and field cross country coach, Jaquel Smith. And coach, blink of an eye, January is over with. We're into the move month for a lot of uh, winter sports in February. Just take us back how you think the team's done so far here in the meets they've had in January. Well, we've had some progress each and every week. Um, um, saw some things that we, we could look at potentially trying to get some uh, some of our kids to nationals. Um, getting healthy as well, like I said, it's kind of banged up when I first got here. But, uh, you know, seeing a lot of kids working hard to get themselves back to where they need to be. Um, but definitely seeing a lot of progress uh, at Pitt State last week was uh, a good meet for us. So, yeah. Well, it's really kind of a benefit now for us as an institution that we've got a nice indoor facility in Maryville, Missouri, mm -hmm. a nice indoor facility uh, in Pittsburgh, Kansas. So you don't have to really travel as far as what they maybe had to go into central Missouri, right. uh, you know, and in that area. So just talk about what it's been like for you logistically to yeah. be able to know you've basically got two in your backyard that you can you go to. Yeah, uh, that's a great thing to have. Uh, I mean, in Washburn is on the way next year. Yeah. So, you know, looking at that, we have a three-headed monster there. It was still with KU with theirs. And, and, you know, if we needed to go to Mizzou, we will. But, you know, staying local is kind of being a big thing for us. We had some parents show up and everything. And, <laughs> Kids kind of ran pretty well, knowing that their parents were there. Some didn't even know that they were coming. So uh, I just, you know, think that's uh, been great for us. And with conference coming up at Northwest, um, they're actually hosting it. So we don't really have to do too much but just show up. So that's a different thing from what I've known in the past right. with the uh, Heart of America. We have to have kids help out at the meets <laughs> and bring extra people. So, um, you know, just very excited about what's to come with those, uh, you know, those ven venues and, you know, you know, China, you know, it saves us a buck. <laughs> right. As you build up to the, the conference championships here in the next couple of weeks, who are some of the, of the athletes on, on either side, men or women, that, uh, you know, are knocking on that door to, to be potential national qualifiers? <coughs> well, um, you know, we had freshman Lawrence, uh, Jacob Lawrence, he qualified, and he can go higher. Um, we saw that this weekend, you know, just need a little more work. Um, more so, I would say our relays when it comes down to it, uh, the distance medley relays, which we'll run this Friday at um, Northwest, and then um, the 4x8, uh, we'll take a shot at that at conference on the women's side and the men's side. So I think uh, more so the relays uh, trying to get there. Um, but as far as individual-wise, um, Teresa um, Ambule is still a candidate for the 600. Um, I really feel truly believe she can be a good 400 candidate too, but the 600 is kind of where she's headed to. She's ranked uh, top 25 nationally right now. So hopefully we can hit that B standard soon, if not the A standard, uh, before we get to our conference. So we'll be stressed out about it. <laughs> uh, and as far as the men's, I think Jeremiah Conley still has potential to move up in the rankings, uh, in the, the multis. Um, and, um, you know, Joshua Morris, uh, he kind of got a little hurt uh, back in uh, at the last month with me. So, you know, if he's ready at conference, he might be able to get a good jump in and we, you know, we'll see what happens. So it's indoor track. But we don't necessarily have a facility. We, the, the, the MRF has done a lot to help that. You know, we have the elevated track, right. the turf field, things like that. Well, how do you mix that through, especially when you deal with the weather like we're having today as we're recording this, where there's snow on the ground, it's wind chills in the teens. How do you, how, what's practice look like for indoor track season? We have to be very creative. <laughs> um, you know, the turf is, is great. Um, something I didn't have in my, in my former school and just having that track. Now, of course, we got to watch everybody that's on the track, but we do have it for set hours. So we're able to do a couple things there. Sometimes the turns can be pretty sharp, so we're going to do a lot of fast right. speed stuff there. Um, but, you know, our kids don't mind being outside. <laughs> they do not care. Uh, shoveling the snow is a thing that they did last week. Um, we got practice today out there at 315, so we're going to get after it. And, you know, just got to get continue to uh, bundle up. And uh, I've been to China just to that myself, <laughs> being a South guy. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, Coach will take his squad up to Maryville this weekend. They've got action on Friday and Saturday both. Good luck to you, and thanks a lot. All right, thank you. Welcome to the latest edition of the BRS and Insider. Josh Pound now joined by softball head coach Paul Hunt. And, Coach, you're going to be not the last spring team to start because track is in their indoor season, but 
Uh, you know, you guys' season starts next week. Knock on wood, we'll be able to play. You know, the home games that yeah. we have on the schedule <laughs> this time of year. You, you just yeah. can never know. As we're recording, it's it's in the twenties with teen wind chills, and it's still snowing out. So, but I wouldn't be would be that type of year. If I mean, it's softball season. It's got to do all that kind of stuff, right? Well, I feel like that's what uh, that's what makes us tough, right? <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> no a uh, big shout out to actually to Game Time Athletics just down the road here. Um, they're coming in and laser in our field here. Hopefully this week, if not this weekend. Um, and put some new conditioner on, so we're, we're ready to play. <laughs> well, the preseason poll uh, came out a couple weeks ago, uh, picked number three in the conference. Uh, you know, that's uh, a credit to where you guys finished a year ago. Just talk about what it means, uh, you know, with you and, and, a, and a young program that's yours, what it means to be able to start a season kind of on the radar, so to speak, in the conference. Well, I tell you what, it's been a, a whole shift from the past couple of years, and uh, really a lot of credit needs to go to our alumni that are that are gone now. We graduated five starters last year, um, and, and I think you said the word just really, really appropriately, young. Uh, <laughs> we are going to be, we're going to be real young coming into this year, uh, but we're really excited about our youth. Um, and we look around our, our infield, and, and we're probably going to have, um, you know, one key starter back in, in Molly Chevalier, um, and then... Blair Shanks in center field will be a you know an everyday starter that's coming back, and, and Alex Gillum is going to get uh, get the nod to be our number one on on Tuesday. Um, so having three seniors that are going to have an impact for us this year, but once we start going down that road, we're looking at a lot of new players and even some of our experienced players. We've got uh, you know two players that transferred in from Johnson County. Um, you know they were a national tournament team a, a year ago, and uh, you know we expect big things from them. Um, but really, we want our offense to, to help carry our way. We think we're going to score a lot of runs this year and uh, help a young pitching staff kind of <laughs> kind of get some innings underneath them. Um, and I expect us to be a whole lot better team in May than we are, you know, here early in right. February just after getting some game experience. So, <laughs> well, and, and one thing we talked on with you know with Coach Peterson this time of year, it's it's you it's a delicate balance of being able to take advantage of. You know, upper 30s, low 40s <laughs> to be outside, and then happen to be inside. How much balance have you guys been able to do since you've gotten back and, and started working towards the start of the season? Really, you know, this year's been really tough for us on it. You know, we've gotten outside just a couple of times, and uh, we try to spend the majority of that just kind of going over big picture. Um, what does our butt coverages look like? First and thirds, um, and then just a few reps, but... Uh, to me, this is a great time of the year for our hitters. We want to see a lot of live pitching. Um, all of our pitchers have pitch counts we want to get them up to. Um, so it's very rare right now for our pitchers to be throwing a bullpen and not have a live hitter. Uh, so I really think that helps us early in the year. Um, and now, you know, last year I think we we kind of had that, that slow start strictly, I think, because of what the weather did right. to us. You know, last year we had um, 14 games played before we had a – practice on our field um, and you know we look at that and we started out five and nine particularly in the first 12 we were you know three and nine mm -hmm. and uh, you know we look at some of those losses and I feel like we had a more talented team and if we would have seen a lot of those teams later in the year it would have been a little bit of a different story um, so there's been a big emphasis on just kind of controlling what we can control and then really know what the narrative for the team is you know we want to make a national tournament run. that's that's been kind of the, the mindset since we've been here um, and generally for us, we don't see that happen in, in February. Those are right. going to be games in March and April that matter. Um, so we're really just trying to have that focus right now. Well, that was, you kind of alluded a little bit to me. You know, obviously with baseball, you can put the L screen in front of them as they throw live. How do you handle live pitching in, in a cage situation with softball when the mechanics – are so much different. Do you, are you able to put an L screen or some kind of a screen in front of them? We are. So actually, you know, we go just right off the L screen with, with any of our coaching staff. We're, we're getting a little slow to move out of the way. But um, what's really nice, actually, about you know our, our indoor facilities is we're able to set up all three cages um, and have one of our live pitchers throw in live at a traditional 43 feet, and they've got enough space for our catchers to get work and, and have hitters stand in. So really right now, this is... Uh, if we're going to be forced to be inside, right. this is the time to do it. So, well, you touched on the, the youth, you know, and as a coach, I'm sure you're hoping it's that, that they they are dealing with the situation of they don't know what they don't know, right. and they just 
go with it. <laughs> but you know, you're going to see your ups and downs. Just talk a little bit, maybe. Uh, about some of the, the the newcomers that you mentioned, your two junior college transfers are going to be probably leaning a little bit heavier on them than maybe some of your traditional freshmen. But just talk about how that mix has gone so far for you. Absolutely. You know, and it kind of actually is a nod to our upperclassmen that, that have allowed this to work. I um, mean, you know, we've got great leadership between uh, you know, our captains, uh, Blair Shanks and Faith Harding. Um, you know, they want to make their last campaign their, their best. And, um, you know, knowing that we were going to be young, the fact that they came in open arms and, and helped some of those freshmen kind of settle in and what to expect. And, um, you know, we ran into days where they were a little bit tough on them and days are a little bit easy <laughs> on them and, and trying to trying to get them ready for what this right. this year is and what the expectations are. But um, really that freshman class has a lot of talent in it. Um, we've got a couple middle infielders um, that we expect to, to make an impact. Uh, Natalie Sheffield out of Louisiana, um, right away, she's just a gamer. Um, you know, we expect we expect her to turn it on when things things get bright. Um, Haley Burmeister uh, from Oregon, who um, she can run a little bit, plays from that left side. Um, that's going to probably be a trend that you'll see in a lot of our recruiting classes. Um, if we can get a fast <laughs> kid from the left side, I think good things can happen. Um, and then, uh, you know, on the mound, um, Quinn Ruff throughout the fall looked like she could have been our one. Um, and, you know, she's had some some health battles. She she had to face mono the end of uh, the end of the fall and she's still kind of working her way back to being healthy but uh, we expect big things from her um, Abby Presgrove we think will do some good things for us on the mound um, so it's it's a fun group right now to, to work with and then just see them grow every day well how key is I mean it, everything's made up with softball that there's not as much strain on the arm and all that from pitching but how key is depth in pitching to the success that a team can have? Honestly, I think um, I look at our past two years and where we fell short, um, and it wasn't necessarily in our talent on the mound. It was just that. It was um, when did our talent kind of hit that wall? Right. And, you know, it's interesting, the pitch counts. You know, I think the baseball world's great about it. Let's have, <laughs> let's have some education on, on what we're doing to our bodies. Um, I think for a lot of years, the softball world's been naive. Just go. <laughs> yeah, let's just, uh, hey, want to throw both ends of a doubleheader? <laughs> Why not? Um, so, no, I mean, we, we like to carry four to five pitchers that are going to contribute. And, uh, you know, this year we kind of feel like we're starting to get that that mix in. And, um, like right now, the, the highest pitch count I've let any pitcher go in, in any BP session even is 70 pitches, and that's twice a week, uh, which is um, lower than what we've done in the past. Right. Um, you know, and a lot of our mindset and what we did in the fall, we did a lot more, um, a lot more weighted ball and a lot more um, underhand long toss with our pitchers. Um, really hoping that hey late april um late april they're feeling great we go into conference tournament in may um and they're they're hitting their best velos instead of right. um you know hey we're just trying to hang on and um you know i, I don't know if you're familiar with jaeger sports but um mm -hmm. jaeger sports and um alan jaeger does just a great job um with both throwing programs and their their traditional j bands the surgical tubing that they do to um uh, Get their players right. uh, ready to go. Um, so I'm I'm a big Alan Yeager fan. We uh, we preached uh, a lot of his mental approach, and then we also use both his J bands. But this year for our pitchers, we've adapted their long toss program from overhand to underhand. Mm -hmm. um, and you know we saw increase in velocity in every pitcher we had on the mound that went through the program. Um, and now we're hoping, and kind of it's kind of experimental, <laughs> uh, but we're hoping that's going to lead to some extra health late in the. The spring this year so well coach hunt and his squad knock on wood will be in action in just a little under a week as they'll be out at the bc softball field on tuesday so good luck to you hopefully we'll see you on tuesday appreciate you we'll be out there hopefully <laughs>